So now things are really coming together, but we really only have the one pipe and we want to create a way that pipes are going to continue to come into the world over time. To do that, we're going to create a new piece of C++ that is going to be able to help spawn in these pipes. So inside of our C++ classes, we're going to create a new C++ class and I am going to make this extend actor and I'm going to call this my spawner. Once that finishes, I will reload all and then we're ready to get started here. In order to make sure that we do have something that is in the world and is movable, I am going to go and I'm going to create one simple component, which is going to be similar to the box component we created for our big pipe. So since I'm a cheater, I'm going to go and I'm just going to copy and then paste that into a newly created private section for our pipe spawner here. And then again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're going to go and we're going to grab our box comp initialization and we're going to drag that into our spawners constructor. Now, as you can see, we have our squiggly. That is because we forgot to give our header file. So once again, I'll go in and I'm just going to copy the header file that I had from before for box component. And I'm also going to give that to my spawner so that we can also make a box component here. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to hold a reference for what we're actually going to want to create. So inside of our header file here, I'm going to create another U property. So just like before, we're gonna create this U property and it's going to be an edit defaults only because as always, we want to be able to set the initial value but not change it. And in this case, I'm going to create a category once more and it can sit within our components category since I think that's a fair enough fit for it. Now, since this isn't necessarily a component in the traditional sense, we are going to need to create some sort of different way of calling what we're bringing in here. And to do that, we're going to use T subclass of. Now T subclass of is basically just a way to store data. And all we need to do is we need to give it something in these curly braces and then give it a name. So what goes in between these braces? Well, it's what we want to actually create. And in this case, we are going to be creating the class and we're gonna forward declare that. And we're going to be creating a big pipe because a big pipe is what we wanna make. And then to give it a name, we're going to call this a big pipe. Now we do have a squiggly here. The reason we have a squiggly is because, well, this actually isn't how you're going to initialize this. Cases are very sensitive in C++ and I actually accidentally added an additional capital letter here. This should be T subclass of with a lowercase class. So now we're good to go and actually do some spawning if we were wanting to here. But in order to have a reference to our big pipe and use it, we're going to need to put in our big pipe header file within our spawner. So if we go in, we're just going to drag and then drop the big pipe.h so that we now have access to our big pipe. So now with all of our skeleton being completed here, I'm going to save all of my stuff and then I'm going to compile. And after getting the go ahead, we're now going to create our blueprint version of the spawner. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to right click on my spawner. I'm going to create a blueprint class and this is going to be called BP underscore spawner and I'm going to store that in my blueprints folder. So now when I open up my BP spawner here, we can see we have our box component, which is just going to stay as a simple box. I just wanna have something to show that it does exist in the world for the purposes of this video. And then we also can see here, we have our component, which is a big pipe. Now we're gonna to have to set this to be our blueprint version of big pipe, because that is what we're actually going to want to spawn into the world. So now we can see here that we have BP big pipe set into our BP spawner. So now when I compile and save, we are now going to be able to reference that whenever we're in code, knowing that the variable called big pipe is set to spawn the BP underscore big pipe. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some sort of function that's going to allow us to summon pipes. Now there is a way to do this all within C++, but I'll be honest with you, it's very difficult and I haven't figured out how to consistently pull it off. So I'm gonna show you the workaround that I like to do in order to integrate blueprints with their easy to use delay function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our code and we're gonna go into spawner.h. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function that can be called within blueprint that is going to be responsible for summoning our pipes. So to do that, we are going to go and we're gonna create something called a u function. And this is going to basically say, I wanna be able to call this within blueprint. And in order to make this even more obvious, we are going to make this of type blueprint callable and the rest of the initialization is as normal. We are going to make it a void because we don't want it to return anything. And we are going to call it spawn pipes because naming conventions. Now from there, I'm going to do the same shortcut I always do where I use the handy little tool wrench here to create my definition within my C++ file 
I will close that out and then I will go into my spawner.cpp where I can now see that we have a U function that is going to be callable within Blueprint for our spawn pipes function. Now, just to drive home that this will work when we do get to the testing phase, I'm going to do my favorite testing thing and I'm going to create a UE log. And as usual, we're going to make it a log temp. We're going to make it a warning and I want the text to say spawning pipe. Now all of this looks fantastic. I will save and compile. And now I'm gonna go back into my BP spawner. Now when I open up the full blueprint editor, we are going to have our little event graph here. And now what's going to be super exciting is we're going to use blueprints and C++ in tandem to achieve a goal. Now I want this to happen every tick. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, every single tick, I want there to be an implemented delay. Now this delay node is great. It basically says, I'm gonna wait here until this timer's done. And I'm gonna set this timer to just one second for now, but we can adjust that later. And when this timer has completed, I'm going to call spawn pipes. And we can see here that the function that we made in C++ is now a thing that we can access within a blueprint. So when I compile and save this here, I'm going to move this over and I'm going to create a blueprint spawner just in the middle of the world for now, because I don't need it to be anything specific. I'm going to load my output log. I'm going to dock it to my layout for the testing we're about to do, and I'm going to hit play. Now, every single second, we can see that we're getting a log that's saying I'm spawning pipes. So we've successfully created this connection between our blueprint and our C++ file, which is going to be really handy as we move forward. So now that we have this connection between blueprint and C++, we can actually go ahead and spawn our pipes within C++ and have it happen using our blueprint. Back inside our spawner.cpp, we already have our function set up that we are going to be spawning pipes within. So let's finalize some things. So we're going to get rid of this log because it's no longer necessary and we're going to create two different variables and I'm going to call them bottom pipe and top pipe. I'm going to call your attention to a little bit of a keyword called auto. When I use auto I'm basically saying I don't know what you're going to be but I believe you're going to be great. So I'm going to make an automatically assigned variable called bottom pipe and I'm going to make an automatically assigned variable called top pipe. Now, obviously these are not finalized yet. So now we have to think about what we're gonna give them. Now, our bottom pipe is going to be equal to something where we're going to spawn in our bottom pipe. And to do this, I'm going to say get world to get the world that we're playing in. And I'm going to call a method called spawn actor. Now spawn actor has triangles and circle. Inside of our triangles, we're going to put what we want to spawn. In this case, we want to spawn a big pipe. So we can see here when I hover over, it's telling us what I need to give. I need to give spawn parameters. The first parameter I need to give is what am I spawning? I'm going to be spawning the variable I have set up called big pipe. Next, I have to decide where I'm going to spawn big pipe. And to do that, I'm going to basically spawn it where my spawner is. So I'm going to take the root component, which is my parent, and I'm going to say, give me this component's location in the world. And then finally, I have to dictate which way it's going to be facing. So I'm going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to take my root component and I'm going to call get component rotation to dictate which way it's going to be facing. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my top pipe because at this point, I'm not going to differentiate them. So we now have these two pipes. I'm going to go, I'm going to save all of my files. I'm going to compile and then I'm going to close this little compiler window and I'm going to hit play. And now we can see every single second we're getting some pipes into the world. Now, this is a little dramatic because we can see here that we're, uh, first of all, only seeing one pipe. But second of all, they're facing the wrong way. But we already established why that's happening. Now, if I hit hotkey F8, I pop out and I can actually see in the viewport here. Now, what's happening is we're actually spawning two identical pipes on top of each other. And we can see this because of how many pipes are being spawned into the world. There are so many pipes. So let's start fixing some things. So the first thing we can fix is why they're facing the wrong way. Remember, we adjusted this pipe, which is facing the right way, to be 90 degrees rotated on its Z axis. Since all of our new pipes are inheriting from their spawner, we're gonna go into our spawner and we're going to rotate our spawner 90 degrees. So now with our spawner rotated 90 degrees, when I hit play, we can see we're now spawning all of our pipes in the right orientation, and that's fantastic. But now we have this issue where we have the top pipe and the bottom pipe facing the same way. So we know that every single rotation is going to have three different parameters. We can see that here from our viewport. We have this roll or X, Y or pitch, and Z or yaw. 
Now what's very interesting is when you try to call those in code, it's not necessarily in the same order. Allow me to demonstrate. If I look and start to create a new F rotator, and let's say I wanna call this uh, rotation difference, just for argument's sake, and I make this equal to an F rotator, when I go and start typing, we can now see the moment I'm adding a second variable, it's trying to help me and saying, hey, are you trying to give it a pitch, yaw, and roll? Well, obviously we are. But remember this order, we have pitch, yaw, and roll. Inside of our viewport, we have roll, pitch, and yaw. We don't wanna just assume that we're rotating things based off of the same way they're presented within the transform of the viewport. We wanna make sure that we're consciously changing the right variable. So which variable do we wanna change? Well, let's select my big pipe here and let's start rotating things by changing things. Let's start with the roll. When I use the roll, well, this actually is the one that we're gonna to wanna to adjust because we can see that we want our top pipe to have 180 degrees worth of roll inputted into it. If we were adding that to pitch, well, then all of a sudden we'd be like swinging towards our camera and almost doing a little bit of a kick action. And if we're adding that to our yaw, well, we've already established what adding to yaw does. It changes the way that we're oriented. So to go back, if I, when I hit this comma, it tells me the order they're displayed in. We do pitch, yaw, and then roll. So we wanna give zero to pitch, zero to yaw, but 180 to roll. So for the sake of ease, I'm just going to take this F rotator that I created and I'm gonna put it on top of my pipes. And then for my bottom pipe, I wanna add this rotation difference. So now when I save here and then compile, I'll close this compiler window and now I'll hit play. And now we're spawning these two pipes and they're giving each other a big hug. 